All right, guys, this here is the back side of a table I'm making out of pecan to go over at our cabin. Now, what I've done here, this table has kerfs cut in the back side of it to prevent uh, warping or splitting in the future. And these are the bands. Now, I'm using my Craig pocket hole drilling system, which is really a quite simple little system to use there with a special bit to drill these holes with here. What will happen is this will turn up on its edge like this, and it will sit right along the edge of the table here. One of these will come in here. These will mount and come in just like this. This will form a corner right here. On the table, you can see my mark here where it has to come out to. It'll come out to there. Then this one will come over to here. It'll form a nice 45 degree angle there. And we'll come on the inside here in these pocket holes. I'll be able to screw, I'll glue this first and then screw it to it. And um, that way it will hold it very stationary. As you can see, this board is running in the opposite direction here. The grains run that way. I pocket hole screwed it into the ends of this and glued it and clamped it so that um, it would dry. I'm not going to show you the top of the table just yet, but this will be the band that will go all the way around this table. And then over here, I have already custom made the legs to go on it. We're going to make this an old fashioned table, just square legged. And uh, it's all going to be made out of pecan. So guys, I got a lot more pocket holes to drill. And once we get them drilled, we'll show you what it, uh, we'll show you the process of actually screwing them down to the table and how we go about doing that. Okay, guys, we've got all the holes drilled now with our Craig system. As you can see, they're all down through here. We've got the backs of them uh, sanded off where they're not, uh, not rough anymore. We have all of our pieces laying here. And now what we're going to do is, uh, let me mention one other thing here. These screws here now, these is a, this is a special type screw that's used. This is very hard wood. And when you're using hard wood, you want to make sure you use a fine thread screw. If you're using soft woods like plywood or pine or something to that nature, that's a soft wood, poplar, you want to use a coarse thread wood. But because this is very hard, we're using a fine thread wood. It's a pan head screw. It has a shank on it made specifically for this job. Now I'm fixing to get some glue and we're going to run a bead of glue along the back side of this right here. Then we're going to pick it up, stand it up, and we're going to put the pocket screws in. Okay, we've got a bead of glue now run along the back of the lumber here. We're going to spread it out and we're going to flip it over and see if we can't get our screws started. All right, we've got our pocket hole screw started here. Now you don't want to over tighten them. Just run them down snug. Okay. We're going to put one in this end here. And guys, we're going to try to get us one in here. Let's see if we can't get that one in. It may take me just a second. We snug down. That's what you want to see is the glue mashing out. And that gives us a good, that's tight. That right there won't move once that glue dries and we get the rest of these in here. We will have this baby secured in place. So we'll get back with you just as soon as we get to finish the rest of the screws in. Okay, we've got our screws all in. And you see just a little bit of glue mashed out along the edges there. That's exactly what we were looking for. A little bit of glue coming out. We're going to get us a little damp rag now. We're going to wipe this glue up. We're going to move on. And we're going to install the rest of them all the way around. All right. So now we have 
all the band successfully put around the bottom of the table. I'm going to show you guys a little trick. When you look at a corner, and everybody goes, oh, that's such a beautiful corner right there. Look how smooth it is. What a lot of, a lot of people do is they take a hammer, and this round part right in here, they lay it on that corner, and they run it up and down it. Like that. It's kind of hard for me to do it and hold a camera at the same time, but you get to gist of it and when you do that what it does is it meshes all this fibers together and then you take a piece of sandpaper and run over it real lightly and it makes it where you almost can't even see the corners in it see how it roll it's kind of rolled over a little bit there i'm in the shadow but it's rolled over just a little bit or you can actually take a hammer and you can just like light, light, lightly tap it. I'm just showing y'all some of the tricks of the trade as to what these people do with this old stuff. And then when they they do that, they'll come back with sandpaper and sand it. Like they'll come around here and. And everybody's like, man, how did they get that to fit so nice? Well, that's how it's done. Now, we're going to come back and put some putty in these holes here. we got some that will be the same color as that. Guys, the next thing is going to be these legs. We're going to come in here. The legs will fit up in the corners just like that. And... We're, to, we're going to come in here and cut some, we're going to cut this post out in a corner down a certain distance down through here. And we're going to put a brace from over here. It's going to sit across ways on this whole thing like this. So we can fasten the post in here as well as out here on these outside edges also. So we're going, to, that's going to be the next thing that we're working on. We're almost to get this table where we can start putting the stain on it to match the countertops in the cabin. And hopefully, we're gonna get a rock hard glass look finish on this thing that's gonna be awesome. I, uh, I took my chisel, we made a mark, we cut into here, and we chiseled all this out where it's nice and smooth now. This, in return, will pick up and will sit right in this corner like this. We have actually got two marks here. We have a mark here and a mark over here. The way we done that, we picked the leg up and we stuck our square under it right where that mark was. We made us a pencil mark right here. Made us a pencil mark right here. And to check ourselves, what we'll do we will stick our square across here. This should be a 45 degree angle. Now there, our mark is there, and our mark is there, which tells us that we have our angle right. So what we'll be doing is once we get this board stuck in here, this post, is we will actually cut us a board to fit from over here to over here cut two 45 degree angles on it and that way we can fasten it to here here and into this part of the post down here okay just to give you all an idea about what we're talking about this is the way it will go in there and that's not nailed or fastened or anything i just have it setting in there to kind of give you an idea about what i'm talking about that will lock that leg in place and we shouldn't have any problem with it moving once I get it all pushed up in there nice and tight and get everything snugged up and chiseled out where it fits really tight. I think that's going to work. We're going to do this on all four corners of the table. Guys, once we get that done, we'll be ready to start the staining. All right, guys, we 
glued the legs on both sides on the inside oh, wow. and the bottom and then I came back and I nailed them with my gun into the sides here then these are the cleats that I was talking to you about how we put them in there I used stainless steel screws on these because if you ever notice an old antique table or anything you ever go to work on it all the screws are always rusted because it's been left setting somewhere and moisture's got to it so if this ends up being an antique someday then I left stainless screws in it so that we don't ever have to worry about them rusting or anything like that. Now, you'll probably never be able to get them out because stainless is so soft. When I put them in, they were pre-drilled and they went in tight. So I don't know if they'd ever come out without breaking, but this baby, I mean, you can take a leg. I can't even, I can't even shake that leg at all. So this table hopefully will be nice and sturdy. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna to try to get it off of here and get it flipped up right. It's done been sanded. We're waiting now to see what we're, uh, what color stain we're gonna put on it. I think we're gonna go with the same thing that's on our countertops at the cabin, but we're gonna get this baby out, guys, where we can take a look at it. This ain't you're going not, nowhere. You're not gonna be. This is a solid oh, table. And it looks awesome, guys. Solid pecan. I mean, it is got awesome. Okay, guys, this is pecan. Uh, it was a wood flooring that we had gotten from an individual, one of our subscribers, to put in the cabin, but it actually wasn't enough to do the cabin, so we've done the countertops with it. And from the countertops, I learned a valuable lesson that it's not milled good. So I remilled it myself and put it back together to make a tabletop out of so it would be nice and smooth and slick. No uneven surfaces, uh, no gaps in it anywhere. Um, glued it, uh, Craig screwed it all together. And guys, I think it's gonna make an awesome addition to our cabin um, uh, as far as just being a handcrafted table. It's just Wanda and me, so we didn't need a large table. We decided we wanted something that was uh, small and something that kind of looked old. We wanted a table that was traditionally built with the square legs, no fancy turning on them or anything like that. We just wanted it to be a simple, old looking structure. And guys, I think we've achieved it. I mean, it is something that even uh, like we got these hand grinding stuff, I made the table sturdy enough and strong enough so we can clamp something onto it if we want to and, and grind it or whatever and not have to worry about hurting the table it's not going to break it it's not going to mess it up we wanted it the hardest wood we could possibly get and that was pecan and pecan is very hard believe me i've been working with this now this table's probably taken me oh my gosh probably six months or longer to do um because it's just been so hard to work with and plus I don't have a lot of time but um, perseverance has paid off and I think once we get the stain on it I think you're gonna see a huge transformation Candy's been hollering so to keep her quiet through the video Danny's feeding her okay guys we've decided to use special walnut on this we're fixing to give it a go and See what it looks like. You want to go with the grain of the wood. And that piece turns different. So yeah, it goes to... in a different direction. This one does. Y'all notice the coloring is looking awesome. And I like to let mine set for a moment. It won't be this dark, but no. oh my goodness, isn't that gorgeous? Give me just a moment to spread this a little bit. I don't want it to be where you can see a starting and a stopping and all this kind of stuff. I want to make sure we get good penetration with this stain so that we don't have places that are, that are not done. 
I don't like to do large areas at one time. That way I can blend it together if I need to. I also like to make sure I get a complete long run done while it's still damp. How rich. I didn't have the sponge I wanted on hand. I, He's having to do with a little I'm sponge. having to do it with a little one. This is not the one I read originally wanted to use. It'd be beautiful if it stayed that dark too, but it will stay pretty dark, I'll assure you. But it's not that that deep, but it's not gonna be that beautiful. deep, but it will be I'm trying to get to where the grain is not so white so that when I have to join it back, I can feather it. Anything that's in a real white area is easy to see if you start and stop. I can feather this in so it don't Okay, set that right there right quick. Go back to the original beginning part. Look at that. Give me just a minute here with it. If I can feather it so it don't. I can lightly feather it in. And it looks antique when I get through with it. It's looking beautiful. Some pieces are going to be darker than others with their color, right? Well, this, this I'm trying not to wipe it. I don't want to wipe it too hard. Yeah, it's going to lighten up some. It does. That is beautiful. You want to continue to work while it's still wet. You don't want to let it set. So you're going to be putting a sealer over this. I'm going to be putting a heavy marine clear coat over this more likely just so that it, I don't ever have to worry about it being messed up. It's looking like an antique table already. I like it. like it a lot. My biggest issue is keeping this wet where it joins that right here. I don't want to have a place where you can see where there was a joint in it. Coming together, guys. I think it's going to actually look like a traditional old antique when I get through with it. It does. It is looking really good. And the pecan wood with all the nuances in the wood, I mean, make it look like an old table. Plus, I sanded it a particular way, too. So, I mean, yeah, that... Yeah, you can see here, it looks like there's all kinds of little... I don't want it to look new. I want it to look old. Yeah, like it's been scratched or scuffed yeah, up. Yeah, I did that with the sander on purpose ahead of time. It looks like it's had some use already, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm after. I just want to go ahead and let the stain have time to impregnate the wood really well so that um, it has time to completely dry because this is an oil-based stain. This is not a water base. Well guys, we're back over here at the cabin um, and we're eating at our new table that we made out of pecan. It, uh, we custom built this table for our size, one of nice tall people, and uh, our arms lay nice and level on it. We're not all hunched over on a table that's too low and it's the right size for the area here. Um, made just, out of pecan? Nice, nice. It's nice and slick and smooth. Got a high gloss finish on it. Uh, got our meals here this afternoon. We got the Miss Wanda's put together.
We got us some fresh English peas here. <laughs> this, oh, those things taste fantastic. Uh, I've got my uh, pork ribs from the pigs we had on the property here. And we got some of our white sweet potatoes that's been sliced up and baked. Man, them things is fine, I'm gonna tell you. And I have a, a thin slice of chicken with uh, our banana peppers that were stuffed. And y'all, it's just amazing. The table runner that was sent to us. Yes, isn't that beautiful? Y'all, the this matches my countertops. It's pecan, just like the countertops. And I'm, I'm just in love with it. Danny did a fabulous job on this table. The runner we have on the, the back side of the table because the Alexa Pure, we didn't want it sitting with the little legs down on top of the finish on the table. So this is a perfect, uh, it's a perfect asset for the table here uh, for the Alexa Pure to sit on. Worked out beautiful. Um, uh, thank you for the, for the table runner. And it's, uh, it, it's the right colors. It matches the colors of the room here. Yes. It matches our cabinet. Got our kitchen window curtains in there, our bathroom curtains. I mean, uh, it matches everything. Uh, it was really, perfect. It really perfect, and uh, we can't say enough good things about that. But um, guys, it's about time for us to kick in here and enjoy the feast at the cabin. <laughs> Boy, that's good. Those fresh English peas are amazing. They are. They're amazing. They, they're, they're what makes the meal.